Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video I'd like to show you how to put together a uh, sprocket set with a chain that will go in between it and try to simulate uh, a certain amount of motion that will go with that. This is prompted for one of my students who is putting this together. He has two sprockets design and these chain links too. I made some modifications to the chain links and I'll show you that uh, here in a moment. But his desire is to try to model this and he was kind of scratching his head about it and after a little bit of thought I think I came up with a decent solution to this. So what we have in here, we have a couple different uh, elements in our uh, assembly. It's a brand new assembly. I call it the path assembly. We have our path, which is a, a sketch that's involved in that. I have that fixed to the origin because I don't anticipate that to, to really move. And we have some flexible elements in here. We have a, uh, a chain. I call it CSS uh, chain and a CSS chain 2. So it's essentially his chain 1 and chain 2. I made some uh, modifications to it in order, made, uh, in order to make this uh, work a little bit better. So let's go ahead and go to the path. Uh, it's a part. We have that uh, inserted in here, and if we double click on it, it actually goes into the editing mode within the assembly. So we can actually see the chain links that we have in there so far. So, what it does, I put in some geometry in here, I uh, put in two uh, um, sketch geometry uh, center line or maybe construction line uh, circles in here, represent the pitch diameter of the sprockets. And of course, the pitch diameter of the sprocket is uh, the place where the center of the link or the center of the pin that goes inside of the chain link is going to follow around. So the pitch diameter is roughly halfway between where the peak of uh, the sprocket is, where the point of the sprocket is going to be, and where the valley is too. So right in the middle of that is where these um, these pins are going to go. So that's the pitch diameter. I put in a couple of uh, lines in here that were uh, tangent to it. Mirrored this line down to the bottom. And I put some, uh, some, uh, some lengths in here. So I put in an arc length in this one, arc length on the bottom one. Some of these are driven because once you put a couple of these things in here, then uh, it completely uh, defines uh, the, uh, you know, the, the sketch. So what I did is I made this my variable down here, and I took this element, uh, this length, and this length, added those up, and what I'm trying to do is make it uh, so it's within, uh, within four uh, digits after the decimal, four units after the decimal, I'm going to make sure it's within a quarter of an inch. So each one of these uh, chain links is about a quarter inch long. So that way when we get all the way around and get our last chain uh, linked together, we can get it to, to uh, link together with a fairly close accuracy. We're not going to go through that sort of length on this, but I want to make sure I got that sketch geometry in here correct to begin with. So one thing we haven't done yet is our uh, path. So we already have a path in here. Let me go ahead and delete that and show you how to do that. The desire here is to try to create a, some continuous geometry so we can select that one piece of geometry, that sketch geometry in here, in order to establish a path. Because what we're going to be doing with our chain link, so we're going to take that origin of the chain link and put that on that path. So when we take the chain and rotate about that path, it'll actually follow that path around. It won't do it by single uh, line segments, so we have to kind of create that. And this is a good environment to do that in. So let's go ahead and do this. What we're going to do with the control key is select on the, the four elements that are going to make up that path, two arcs and two lines. And then we're going to right click and go down here to this, uh, this uh, in the properties uh, pull out. We're going to choose make path. It's one of the options down here. Nothing seems to have changed. If we wanted to, we can right click in that path and reselect that. But you'll notice that the tap element here is now a path. The element behind that are the arcs and lines. And we can edit that path too by taking, you know, adding or uh, deleting some of the elements that make up that path. So we're in pretty good shape there. We've created that path. So let's go ahead and close this out. And then let's go ahead and uh, make some definitions in here. So with my chain 1 and then chain 2, chain is the name of the first one, and then chain 2 for the second one, I do already have a couple different uh, mate relationships in here. We have a coincident relationship with the front plane to the front plane, front plane to the chain to the front plane to the assembly, and then a concentric relationship between uh, the first chain link and the second one. And it's something very similar with the second chain. So we have a coincident uh, front plane to front plane and a concentric relationship between the second link and the front link. So the links themselves, let's go ahead and open those up because I made these uh, some changes to these in order to make this work right so we don't have uh, interference in regard to the parts we're putting together. Uh, the student had actually had the pin and uh, the spacer between the you know, these two links in here. He actually had these down here. What I did is I took those out and put in a hole in here instead. So when we take our second link in here, uh, and we can um, make a relationship between the surface of this pin and, and this surface over here. 
in order to get those things linked up. Also put the origin right here in the middle of this, uh, right in the middle of the, of the pin down here, so that we can take that origin. That's going to be the point that we're going to be using to put on that path. So let's go ahead and close that out, and let's start uh, mating this. So I'm going to get that kind of close to the path, and what I want to do is go into uh, mate. It's going to go down to advanced mates. What we want to choose is path mate, and what it's looking for in a path mate is a component vertex. Looking for a vertex only, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose that point uh, where the origin is of that one part, and then we're going to do the path selection. And let's stick up the selection manager open first. So what we want to do is we want to be able to select something that's going to have a closed loop. If we choose this option down here, which is select closed loop, it's going to select the closed loop of that path. Otherwise, we'll probably just select that line segment. And uh, should already have that in there, so let's go ahead and choose that. I believe we do the green check mark. There it goes, how it selected it. Didn't show it there at first, but it should be on that. So now that uh, link is. Oops. A funny little motion there. Now that uh, origin's on that path, and we're going to do the same thing here. So let's go back to uh, Mate. Let's go to Advanced Mate, Path Mate, uh, Component Vertex. We're going to click on that, and then uh, do the Selection Manager again. Make sure we uh, select the Closed Loop. And, uh, gosh, it should be selected. I'm not certain why it's not showing up, but I know if we do the green check mark, it'll quickly uh, select that and put it in there. So now we have those two origins on there. This one's a little bit loose. But I think you get the idea of what we're going to be, uh, what we're doing here. Let's go ahead and take this link, uh, chain link segment. With the control key, we're going to go ahead and drag that off. Let's go ahead and establish some relationships in here. We're going to make these two, uh, we're going to make those two together. And there could be the tendency of trying to take these two faces and mate them up together too, but what makes a better selection here is to go down here to uh, that chain link we just put in here. Click on that front plane and this front plane, let's go ahead and mate those together. I think that uh, resolve itself a little bit better. And uh, while well, we should have had that open, we should have made that selection there, but let's go down to advanced mates, path mate. Uh, the component vertex is going to be that. Selection Manager, let's make sure we do the closed loop. Click on our uh, path over here and just scoot out a little bit to make sure that that's selected. Green check mark. And we should, should be in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and do one more. Let's take uh, that chain segment, put it off there. Do the same thing we did before. Front plane to front plane. Mate. Green check mark. Let's go ahead and take this surface and then this surface. Green check mark there. Go down to Advanced Mates, Path Mate. Let's go ahead and choose that point. And with the Selection Manager, make sure we do is Close Loop. Select on that. Green check mark over here. Now we should be in pretty good shape. So if I did this right, I'm confident that I did, this should wrap around. So let's go ahead and drag that around. Woohoo! Looks like it works pretty well. And it should go around a big circle too, so you can see what would happen if we got the big chain in there, if we got the rest of the links in here, in order to create a complete chain, then that should uh, should resolve itself pretty well. But, uh-oh. Looks like some of the segments kind of doubled over on each other. But there, it seems to have resolved itself pretty good there. There we go. I think it all depends on the element you pull. So once you get the full chain in there, it should be in pretty good shape. I'm not going to put the sprockets in, we'll save that for another film, and once you do get the sprockets in, it's nothing more than just uh, aligning them uh, to where they're at right now with the circles that are in there. But uh, once you get that in there and uh, provide a certain amount of motion with those sprockets, you should be able to, with the motion study down here, be able to get that to uh, resolve itself pretty well, and with some additional uh, mate relationships in there, you should be able to get it to resolve outside of the motion, motion study too. So, enough said here. We'll see you in some other films.